Welcome to Dare to Leap, a conversation and community supporting women just like you to gain the freedom, flexibility, and financial security you desire and deserve with CEO and founder of Virtual Expert Training, Kathy Guggenauer. This is Dare to Leap, and now here's the powerhouse tiara-wearing Kathy Guggenauer. Hey everybody, Kathy Guggenauer here with the Dare to Leap podcast. And I am super excited to have a very special guest with us today. Her name is Sarah Sparks. Don't you just immediately like her just from that name Sparks? <laughs> well, she is the soul's guide to freedom and founder of Create the Spark. I, want to, I wanted to steal that the moment I heard it because it really resonates with me and I'm guessing it's going to resonate with all of you listeners also. Sarah is a Midwest, farm-raised, college-educated, former, former government employee. I find that really interesting with all those other things. So we're going to get into some of this. Turned business owner who is no longer ashamed of her spiritual woo-woo-ness. Woo. <laughs> woo <-woo. laughs> and we're gonna talk a lot about that. And Sarah now allows spirit to speak through her. Now we'll tell you that just before we started this, she said spirits are really speaking to her a lot today. So I think we're gonna have a really exciting <laughs> interview. Sarah guides mentors and coaches highly intelligent, organized, funny, fabulous professionals who might feel lost or tired or worn out. And she helps them have the confidence and trust in themselves to ask for what they want and say what they need all with love. Boy, that really resonates with me. I have felt all of those things. Sarah, thank you for being here today. Thank you so much for asking me. I loved getting to know you and our conversation a few weeks ago. And when you asked, I was like, ah, uh, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> so Sarah, um, start back when, when you were still a government employee or even before that, and tell us your story of how you came to where you are today. When did the spirits begin talking to you or when did you begin noticing it? And how did you get from, you know, that, believe me, I understand Midwest values. I live in the Midwest. I'm recording this in Missouri right now. Mm -hmm. So take us away. I knew that I've always had a gift and I, I knew since I was about three that I had a gift to connect. I grew up Catholic. Um, that's what my parents still are. They go to church um, a few times a week. Well, not during COVID, but they still attend like online and stuff. And they're very much active. I was involved with the Catholic church um, until I wasn't, but I was like um, a Eucharistic minister. I, I always felt like I had some sort of connection to God and it wasn't just based on religion or faith. It was like, I could be on the swing set when I was like three or four. I it was like one of the first memories and I was swinging and I was just having a conversation. I, I It has always been this two way conversation. There were times that in my life that I didn't have faith and I didn't believe in God and I turned off what I call divine guidance spirit has asked me to refer to um, when we are in communication, just to call it divine guidance for anybody, for all different religions. I'm not just supposed to work with Catholics or with even people who believe in religion. It's um, everybody. So um, whatever faith background, if you believe in spirit, universe, God, love, energy, uh, Buddha, I don't care. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't matter to me. If there's some sort of connection and people want to know how to listen to that divine guidance and make their lives easy, effortless, enjoyable, like it feels like a lot of people that I work with and myself, I felt like I, um, there was a lot of weight on our shoulders. Like we have the world on our shoulders and we need to make all these decisions. 
And there's a way to not do that. And it's listening to divine guidance. So I have felt like I've always done it, but there was, I mean, there was this time from like about 18 to 22, I got married at 23, right out of college. We bought our first home at 25. Um, we owned cars, farmland, um, had the job, the house, the husband, the body, the friends, the family, all the things. And yet I myself felt lost, tired, worn out, pulled in many different directions. Um, I would come home from work to an empty house. My ex-husband was a workaholic. So I was a single married woman and I feel like that's a worse place to be. I mean, I know that there's lots of worse places because I'm not going to go into it today. That's a whole nother story for another time, but I planned my own death and I, that didn't happen. And I'm, so I, wow. I've been to other yucky spots, but I yeah. feel like when you're married, you want to, or in, in a committed relationship with your partner that you want to be with them and celebrating together and you have a respectful, loving union and you're thinking of each other as equal partners, um, not one above, one below, one gone, one here, all the, all the things, but like you're working together um, in unison and believing that you're one and you're having great conversations and all, all the things. Um, at least that's what I always envisioned and that's not what was happening. So I was lonely and Oh, so super horny. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> but then as I was going to say it, I was like, I don't know if this is the right crowd to say that. Uh, oh yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, feel free. Feel, there's nothing off limits here. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I was, and then that really doesn't have much to do with, but that's where I was. It was just like, I was so lonely and it was just like, somebody please hold me. I just want to be loved. Um, and, and so, so many women feel that way, Sarah. Um, more and uh, most women I know do not share that because I know I've been there and I was embarrassed so I didn't share oh, it no one knew the pain yeah. I was experiencing because from the outside looking in that's why I shared like I had the house the husband the body the friends yada yada yeah. friends out to me and be like because I was so young I was 25 and owning a home and and uh, combined income we were well over 250,000 a, a year and because my husband was, because my, my, my ex-husband was, was that workaholic. I mean, there was, yeah. we had so many different jobs. <laughs> Trust me, the local government job wasn't bringing in the, the, the hundred K. <laughs> <So, laughs> um, and I just felt like if I were to truly step into who I was and show people who I really, really was, that they wouldn't like me, accept me, um, I would be seen as weird. Like I would be the crazy lady that talks to spirit but ever so often I would, my way of getting that creative energy out was to write little notes to people. And I remember being part of CEW, which was Christian Experience Weekend. And I was a speaker and then there was a women's retreat and a men's retreat. And the men's retreat, um, we, those who were part of the weekend and like knew the back end, cause it's all kind of like secret of how things played out. It was your, if you were participating in it and you were just a guest and you didn't know all the back end of what was going on, you just would, you would be practicing trusting and in, in the flow of, you know, trusting others of what's going on. And so those in the background of things, I was part of that. And we got to write notes to these 50 men that were part of it. And I was up there and I was writing and um, this, I was writing basically the same message for all of them. Cause I, I didn't know them. I just had their name. And there was this one person that I was like, I just had, and this was before I knew that I could channel or that like I had all these gifts and I've developed them over the course of 11 years. Um, but I was writing and I was like, this person lost his daughter. I, I need to write something like this. It's like, God, what do you want me to write? And I wrote this message and honestly, I can't remember now, but I, I just remember being at the closing ceremony for this weekend. And I was sitting in the church, listening to the men um, share their testimonials. And this man stands up and he's like, and he's holding my note and he's like, I don't know who wrote this, but no one here knew I lost my daughter and she died in a car accident. And like, oh, and I just like, got goosebumps. You, like oh my whoever gosh. wrote this has healed me. 
and it wasn't me. It's like, it's never me that spirit is speaking through. And oh, I also should clarify for those who are wondering, like, it's not just um, a bunch of spirits or there's not like entities and I don't connect to negativity or the devil or whatever, because we've got people ask me that all the time. Like, oh, I don't know if you should channel for me. And I'm like, look at me. Do you really think I'm letting that crap in? No, thank you. Um, and so I- I'm gonna have to send you a pair of devil horns. <laughs> no. <laughs> and I only, I set my intention, uh, part of listening to divine guidance, the first step is allow. And before I ever even allow and open up, I set the intention to only connect to love and light, to God, spirit, creator, universe, whatever you want to say. So um, when I, it's not ever me that is like sending that note to somebody. It's literally like this message has come to me and I'm just the deliverer. Mm. Hope wow. that answers all of it your does questions. oh my <laughs> gosh that that was a great story so um i love when you said <clears throat> that the man that the man said whoever wrote this healed me and you immediately said it wasn't me that healed him it was the spirit speaking through me yeah yeah, yeah. the world's purpose has changed over the last couple of weeks and it is now from this is what has spirit spirit has shared with me is that it's now to heal souls up to a couple of weeks ago. It was to guide souls along their journey in, in this life here. And spirit's like, no, like the world needs to be healed. And there's a lot of inherited emotions that are coming up to the surface that are passed from generations to generations to generations. And I love this because my sister and I were talking about, how many of the women in our family have gone through um, depression. Um, my, my grandfather killed himself um, because of, of depression. Um, it, they've had nervous breakdowns. They've been on medicine. And um, my niece, who is in her early 20s, has also experienced these emotions as well. And her doctor was like, well, it's passed down in the bloodstream. And mm -hmm. so I love that it's like scientific and also mm -hmm. comes from an energy spiritual level that that's, that's true. It does, it does um, pass down from generation to generation, but it is also the individuals themselves that are needing the healing um, at, at a soul level. And so it is through, through spirit, through God, through the universe that, that is happening. So that's also what I mean by when I say it's not just me. Um, it's not like another person. And that's what I think there's a, something that could be taken away from our conversation. And I know I could go in depth and we could have lots of conversations about this, but for you, for those who are listening, and if you could take away something is don't always rely on other people to heal you. It's you and your connection to your own divine guidance, to your inner wisdom that is healing. Wow. That's huge. Okay. So my obvious next question is how do we do that? Because, you know, I, I my guess is that you're going to tell me that we all have this ability or you wouldn't have just said that we all have this yeah. ability. Yeah. And so, but how do we tap into that? And it's probably, you know, like more than one step, but could you give us like just one or yeah. two things to begin that process or resources. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's actually five steps and I, and I, I don't give them cool. all, they're all, I'll give them all. So awesome. if, you, if you want to write them down, um, if, if I don't know if this is possible, but I also have like a free guide that people can have. Oh yeah, it, please, I please can, like, share it to or a link um, or something. Yeah. Um, mention it, how people can get it. And then we'll also include a link in the show notes. Okay. Okay. Um, and actually, I forgot the link. Like, name. oh, that's so okay. I'll just, we'll I'll just include that in the show notes. <laughs> Sorry. That's um, all right. So, how to listen to your divine guidance? Spirit gave me this. Um, I went to a, a goal setting workshop with a client, and I usually don't interact with clients while they still are my clients. Um, but I was led to do this, and I'm so thankful I did. Um, I was being very judgmental because uh, the leaders of like 300 people that day were like, just go talk to Jesus, like go get your goals by Jesus and everything. And I knew what 
the leader was was sharing. And I was like, oh, okay, I'll just go talk to spirit. Okay, cool. And I like setting goals that way because then I know I'm in alignment with my soul and where I'm going. And the, the rest of my, t- just, just my table just all sat there and I was like, mm, okay. So <laughs> that would have been me. Talk. That would have like, been me. <laughs> like what? Yeah, I would have been like, uh. Like a lot of, it was a Christian um, workshop and Mm -hmm. um, they were like, we can talk to Jesus. What are you talking about here? Like we can have this (laughs) communication. Mm -hmm. And so I said, I looked at like the other 10 people at my table and they were all like doing the, the, the thing. And so we got up, we all got to disperse, go throughout the church. And I went outside and on this, like the front stoop of, of the church and I was by myself and I was just, I had my iPad with me. And so I was just typing and I felt a lot of judgment. Usually I feel when I'm like judging somebody is when a spirit's going to come in and be like, yo, woman, start listening. Stop being so judgmental. <laughs> and so in comes spirit. And I'm like, okay, why am I being so judgmental? Like what is going on? Like why, like why why can't people listen to their divine guidance? And, and um, Spirit was like, they're too wrapped up in the how. And I was like, oh, okay, mm. well then we'll just share with me and I'll share with them on how to listen to divine guidance. Mm-hmm. And he's like, and he just Spirit was like, um, there's five steps and I'll give them to you. And it's allow first, number one, allow, ask, receive, trust, and act allow, ask, receive, trust, act. And many times people ask me, well, if I, if I ask, shouldn't I allow? So why is allow the first? And allow can be taken in two different contexts. Allow, um, like you're letting go of control and those expectations. And literally I feel, I feel like I close my eyes, I breathe, I connect, and I mean, I have a whole e-course on, on this. So, oh, cool. so like, like we'll sh- on, like, so we'll share I, that link too, if you don't so, mind. So I, I'm trying to summarize because it, it can be extensive. And then I also add it into how to listen to define, how to uh, live your chosen path program. And so it's really at the core of everything I do. Um, but when I allow, I just, I first literally view myself, like if it's, if I've got gates or walls up, I lift those walls up, I open those gates, and I just sit there and be like, you know what, I don't know. I'm just going to allow you to to, to, to lead. Like, who am I to connect with? And I start, and then that's the, I'll ask, you know, who am I to connect with? What conversations am I to have? How do you see my day going? Um, and, And when people ask me, well, you sometimes tell me to let spirit lead. Well, what do you mean by that? And that's the allow part. It's not me trying to force things to happen. It is me taking a step back and allowing spirit to lead. And, and the allow can be just like the opposite of control. You're just trying not to control or overthink things. Um, I love it. So yeah, it makes allow, a lot of sense. Ask, receive, trust, and act. So th- those are the five steps. That's how you listen to divine guidance. Somewhere along the way, if you want to ask yourself, where do I stop myself in, in, in these five steps? If you aren't listening and, and if you're having a hard time, if you do and you have your own process, cool, awesome. But if you're not and you're jammed up somewhere, where do you stop yourself along these five steps? Um, some people don't know where, like what questions to ask or can I ask questions or where do I start with that? And honestly, when I am like, all right, I don't, I don't know how to move forward from here. I'm feeling a little stuck. Spirit? what questions am, am I supposed to ask? Ask <laughs> and that like, one, yeah, that's like, a good one to ask. ask. these three questions. I was like, <laughs> oh, got it. And then the receive, knowing how you receive. Um, I've had clients who are um, naturalists. They, um, I don't even know if that's the right word, but I had a client who was out in nature and she takes people on nature tours. So she's mm-hmm. like a natural resource person mm-hmm. and for like a park in Florida. And she was like, Sarah, I don't hear like you because I'm audible. Like it's literally like spirits like sitting right next to me. And wow. so um, I was like, well, we don't all receive the same way. How, like what's going on in your world? And she's like, 
oh, I go for these walks in the morning and I do this chanting for the, for the four directions and I'm honoring the earth. And all of a sudden these like weird animals that are not supposed to be on my path start showing up like mm. an eagle or a raccoon or wow. like, like, like things that like, and, she, and she, she's like, and they just sit there and they just watch me. And I'm like, it, you're receiving That's amazing. The animals. Like that, That's like amazing. the animals are talking to you. Yeah. Um, other people, I've had clients who feel like, like a slight tickle on their face and then they're like, oh, spirit's near. Okay. Um, or they get goosebumps as, as a yes. Um, mm -hmm. I teach people to simple things. Uh, when you're asking questions, I, I invite, I invite you all to, um, take, go on an intuitive walk is what I say. And it's nice out. Um, and that's what I did. I stayed curious to, okay, I have this gift. I don't really know how to use it. What's going on. And I started with something like yes or no questions. So, um, do I go straight? Yes or no. Do I take a left? Yes or no. Do I take a right? Yes or no. And so I just went on this walk and I just let spirit guide me. There was no expectations. There was no, um, restrictions or anything like that. I mean, I wasn't like I jumped straight from government employee hiding myself to like channeling openly for 20, 30, hundred people, you know? <laughs> yeah. So I, let's I take a step back. Way. Let's oh. take a step back to how that happened. Because oh. one, first of all, thank you for sharing that. Oh. That, that is, <laughs> that's some amazing takeaways that people can really benefit from. And again, we will have the links to anything you want us to share on okay. in our show notes. But let's take a step back to, okay, so you're in this marriage where you're really unhappy, you're not fulfilled, you're worn out, you're all those things that you're yeah. not, you now help women overcome. And you're in this, number one, in an mar unhappy marriage, number two, in a job, I don't know what was going on in the job. What changed first? And what was the thing, the tipping point that made you go, all right, this has to change and I'm going to do X. I asked my ex-husband, so my best friend and I um, went for a run, um, a half marathon out in Des Moines, damn to damn. And it was, it was in May, um, 2009 and we, we were running and the whole 12 point, it, it was a 20 K. So like 12.1 miles. I complained the entire time about my job, about how this government employee wanted to borrow a crock pot. And I didn't think that that was, po I mean, like I lost my shit over a crock pot. <laughs> like probably shouldn't be there. Probably like, I, I know that my chosen path wasn't to sit in a three hour meeting about pigeon poop that's affecting the downtown area. Like I, and I also cannot watch Parks and Rec. I, I was a Parks and Rec director. Um, I, I can't watch it. It's like, it's too real. They're all the like, the micro shit that goes on. Yeah. I just, I can't yeah. do it. And I was oh like, my gosh, and, that's hilarious. and I took the job to like answer to a park board to see if I could answer to a council because I was getting my master's in public administration and I wanted to be an HR director and or a city administrator. And I was like, well, I'm gonna have to answer to a city council. <gasps> I cannot do that at all. That is not me. <laughs> OMG, I can't do it. <laughs> and so with all of those frustrations going on, it was like, it, it, and that's how you know, like that's how you know you are like on the verge and you are ready to be living your chosen path. I just did a master class yesterday in my Woman Up Spiritual Community on Facebook about how do you know if you're ready to be living your chosen path? And that was one of the things is like, you're at the point you're just like, all these things are pissing me off. I, I gotta do something. And it's like, and so you feel like I'm totally out of alignment. I'm totally whacked out. And what is wrong with me? I am so tired of having these swirling thoughts of what is my purpose? Why am I here? What is my purpose? Why am I here? And you're just like, okay, I gotta do something. Something has to give. And what gave was when that friend asked me to go on vacation. Um, and she's like, well, let's bring our husbands. Let's go four away. I think you just need a break from the job and all the things. So we asked our husbands, neither wanted to go. It was going to be July down in Florida, yada, yada, it's hot, blah, blah, blah. And, but like a legionnaire was offering like $30 flights, you know, cause at the time that's what was, I mean, even now, I guess they, they have those cause it's COVID, yeah. but anyway, so we got a sweet deal. 
And I was like, let's do this. And our husbands were like, no. And mine was like, I got to work. I can't, I can't take off. Now, mind you. I'm not surprised by that after your story. I was like, I bet he had to work. (laughs) Yeah. And so, and I, and I, I got used to that reasoning. And honestly, I didn't even think of him as a workaholic. I don't like labeling people, but after I walked away, I was like, "Mm, that's what's going on. And that's usually not actually what's going on. I mean, there's like other avoidances, you know, right. But we don't need to get into that. Um, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm a talker. So you know. no, you're awesome. <laughs> I, am, I am enthralled. If you can't tell, I'm loving it. <laughs> and so um, we um, we're, we're at the airport. He says we, you know, he, he has to work, yada, yada. We make plans um, to go down to St. Pete. Um, everything was like lining up, yada, yada. And so we go to St. Pete beach to, on on this vacation, I'm at the airport and I thought, well, I'll just give him a call and let him know, Hey, I love you. I'll I'll see you in like five days. I hope you have a great fourth. And mind you, it was over the 4th of July weekend. And it's Mm -hmm. actually the same weekend this year as it was, I mean, that like that time. So Uh It's mm-hmm. like, it was like third, it was like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and we flew back on, on a Tuesday. And so he basically had to take off like Friday or something or Monday. Right, one day. Sort of it yeah. wasn't like crazy. Right. And so uh, this was all the thoughts going through my head. I was like, whatever, it's his thing. So I'm at the airport on that Friday. I call him, we're leaving mid-morning. And I hear like when I'm talking to him like this, and he was an electrician for school district in Iowa. And so, or he worked in the schools. And so I knew he would like be inside. So I was like, what the heck is that noise? So I said to him, I was like, what's going on? Are, are you walking in between buildings? And he's like, no, I took off work to go to a farm sale with, with my brother. <laughs> and I was like, it would that, so that was the moment you asked what was yeah. the moment. And I yeah. was like, I'm done. Yeah. I'm done being a single married person. I'm done being the last on your list. Right. I want to be loved. And all Mm -hmm. that I wanted was to be held, respected, Mm -hmm. listened to, Mm -hmm. loved. Mm -hmm. I like all, all I really wanted to do was lay in a hammock under the stars and just chill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And with somebody that, that was holding me doing that. Right. Um, and so that was, that was my decision. I was like, and I got off the phone and I was loving and I I didn't start because I, I, to, to this day, I hate confrontation. Like I, I'm, hardly ever like stand up for what I believe in. I'm like, eh, that seems confrontational. I don't think so. I'll just let you have your own beliefs. Um, and so I just was like, um, you know, have a great weekend. Uh, we'll see. And I like, didn't say like, I love you. I was just like, mm-hmm. great, have a great weekend. We'll see you when you get back or see you when I, I get back. And, mm-hmm. Um, I hung up the phone and I looked out the window and was watching people starting to board the plane. And I'm like, I'm done. Mm -hmm. Like that was my moment. And it was just like it, everybody has those like split second decisions, but it wasn't just that. Like it wasn't. Oh, I know. It was like a thousand other things that came at that point. And and then the job. That that moment is always so interesting. And that's part of why I want to, you know, dare to leap. What is that moment? What led up yeah. to it? And then what was that tipping point? And I hear you. I mean, you know, this is exactly the type of stuff that ever that happens to everyone is something like that. And I feel that moment was when I also was like, you know what? It's time to listen to my divine guidance. I had turned it off. Oh. So I should also say this because this is all part of it as well. 18, I felt really overwhelmed and people feel this way. I feel in their thirties as well. Mm -hmm. Um, there's like, like the twenties, I feel like people Mm -hmm. are given a break on like, Oh, go do your thing. Have fun. You're only in your twenties. Go live it up. Like no, no, like pressure unless you're in the Midwest. And then like 23, you're like, you got to get married because you're, (laughs) um, at least that that was my experience. I don't know anybody else. I got married when I was 22. Absolutely. (laughs) Yeah. And, um, and then the pressure in like of no sex before marriage, especially if you are in a religious family and it's like, well, I guess I'm going to hell. So um, (laughs) sorry if that offends anybody. Um, They ain't going to be listening to this show very long if that offends them. (laughs) 
Um, so 18, I felt really overwhelmed. A lot of people were like, where are you going to college? What are you studying? What are you going to do with your life? All the, all the questions, do, do you have a boyfriend? Is he going to college? All, and I was like, all these inappropriate questions that you're like, that's really none of your business at all. But I was like, I guess I had to answer these. I guess I got to figure my life out. And I had no idea. And so um, one night I felt overwhelmed. I didn't know I could talk with God. I, I, again, I thought like I had to pray, like if I was dying of cancer, or if I was like off to war, I didn't realize that just an 18 year old could have this conversation. Although I felt like I had this like relationship that was different. I wasn't taught that. And so I was just like, uh, so I'm going to talk, have this, have this conversation with you. Hey, how's it going God? So if you could possibly give me a dream or an answer or something to this, like, I don't really know what to do with my life. So you could just kind of tell me that that'd be great. Mm -hmm. I said that that was like my prayer. And that's really how I talk with the spirit now. It's just like, Hey, how's it going? Yeah. I don't know what I'm doing. So can you possibly, that's just, just, uh -huh. just be, just be yourself, you know, and uh -huh. like, I got you. And so I had this dream that night and right before I was going to wake up and I had the same dream once a week for an entire year until wow. I actually met my ex-husband. And the dream was me walking along the beach water to my right sun sun was setting to the right kind of like a bluish teal kind of like your shirt like water seagulls flying over salty air like moisture on my skin um the sand was more like white and shells and not like the granule sand or black sand i mean it was like this and so in my mind when i oh and like 12 feet in front of me was a man that's about six feet tall broad shoulders dark hair tan neck and i and i remember specifically in the dream feeling like, oh, this is home. This is right where I'm supposed to be. Ooh, who is that delicious man? He's taller than me. Short men love me, but that's what I want. <laughs> like, yes, <laughs> I was feeling this way in the dream. And then I woke up and I was like, oh, dang, I woke up. Like, can I, can I possibly go back to sleep and have this dream again? You know, oh. and I did, I had it over and over and I looked for this man and this feeling of being home and welcome for an entire 10 years. Even after I married my ex-husband, I would be walking with him in Vegas, holding his hand and every man that, that walked past. I mean, not on a beach, hello, Sarah, like walking through hallways, walking down streets, driving, everything I was like, is, is that the guy? Is that the guy? Is that the guy? Wow. So on the vacation, after I made the decision in the airport, a couple days later, it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Sunday, we went um, Paris sailing and Friday night, we were told, go to Mulligan's. That's the place to hang out. And I was like, mm, do you think I take a cab there? I don't really feel like paying for that. Can we, can we like walk somewhere? And then Saturday, we went to the concierge and was like, where, you know, where should we go tonight? Where's like the fun place to, to be? And they're like, you should go to Mulligan's. That's the place to be. And I'm like, what the hell is up with this Mulligan's place? And I was like, no, I'm not paying a cab to take us there. Like there, we are on the strip here. Like, let's hang out at one of these 800 bars. Uh -huh. And um, I don't know if there's 800, but you could get this. Yeah. And, <laughs> and so um, uh, then Sunday we go parasailing and the boat and the captain is sponsored by Mulligans. And I was like, what in the world is up with Mulligans? Like, what? Like, is it supposed to be something funny in my life that's going to happen? Like, what? Okay, so when things happen in threes, I'm like, got it. Okay, yeah, I'm paying attention. And so I'm like, okay, Aaron, I think Aaron's my friend who took took me down here because I was being a total B. And so she's like, we should probably go because it's been told to us three times. And I was like, I know, like, what the heck's up with this? So we go have dinner, we get ready, yada, yada. Um, after the pale, parasailing adventure, and we go to Mulligan's, we pay the cab ride, $8. I was like, mother of Troy, like this better, this place better be like the jam of all jams. <laughs> and it's not like, it's like almost cleared out. It's a Sunday evening. It's halfway closing. The band is left. I was like, <laughs> so there's like one other table that's sitting there and it's a chick from Iowa that's talking about rag bry. I was like, oh, well, that's great. I'm glad we're diversifying here, you know? <laughs> And then there is another group of very drunk individuals who the girl came over and started doing a lap dance on my face. And I was like, huh, I'm really uncomfortable because I'm not a party girl. I didn't party in college. I mean, shocker with since I'm talking to spirit and all, but <laughs> I just was like, I don't really know what to do with this. And so this guy comes over and he's like, I'm so sorry. Like we've been drinking all day. It's her boyfriend's birthday. Like we'll just, I'm so sorry. He's like, can I, and he turns to my friend and was like, can I buy you a drink? And I was like, score, Aaron's getting hit on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he 
and and she's like and my friend's like I, yeah I guess you can buy me a drink you know and so he sits down his his friend Ronnie sits down and I was like okay and he the the gentleman who offered the drink and the escorted the lady out was like um would you like me to like I will I'm would you like me to give you a rape free drive back to your hotel so you don't have to like pay for a cab? And I was like, yes, yes, I would like a rape free drive. And he, he looks, he look he had glasses, he had his hat on ca- cargo shorts, t-shirt, like nothing like spectacular, but I was like, he feels safe, which I'm sure every man trying to pick up a woman really wants to be like, Oh, he feels safe. Probably not. It's more like, yeah, girl. And you know, that's not what I thought. I was like, he's safe he's not going to rape me. It's good. Um, and I'm like, I know how to break his nose if, if, if this happens. So it's all good. <laughs> the things I think. And I was like, and I'm saving the $8. That's good too. Fast forward, he drops us off. I asked him to, to drop us off at the Swigwam, which is um, no longer there, but it was there and well, great name, you know? So, um, and we're standing there at the bar and all of a sudden I have this overwhelming feeling I'm like, wow, this feels like home. This feels like I've known him for a really long time. That's really weird. And he's like, do you want to just walk back to your hotel and we can start walking? And I was like, "Uh, I don't really know you. I don't know if we want to like walk back together. So you know where I'm staying. I was like, but we can walk on the beach. That's fine. So I take my drink. We were walking on the beach. Water to my right, sun setting, beach, seagulls, la la la. I drop my cup. And I'm like, oh no, the environment. So I reach and I pick up, pick up the cup. And he already was continuing walking on. Uh-huh. So he's 12 feet in front of me, six feet tall, dark uh-huh. hair. So that's Craig Sparks. <laughs> wow. I got goosebumps like, again. Ooh. I was like, holy crap. This is the guy from the dream. <laughs> like this is happening. Oh my God. But it, it happens like when you dare to leap, like immediately that decision. And I had so much judgment around people who, cheat who are in a marriage and find somebody else i mean i all mm-hmm. the things that i had judgment on spirits mm-hmm. like we're going to teach you a lesson mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and so mm-hmm. i got the lesson um and it, it took me quite a while to let go of that guilt all that mm-hmm. all the things and all the shame of finding somebody but before you were officially good. divorced how could you i know and it did it happened it's the way um, life works sometimes and I find that, I mean, like, it's the same as like, if you were to find a job and you're still in a job right? or, exactly. you, or you decide to like leap into your business and you've been doing this side hustle for, for a while. And then right. you now, maybe now need to quit your job and you're like, holy crap, I'm going to leave. Um, you know, so how did you leave your, the, your job? When did that happen? Um, that happened. So I met Craig, uh, July 5th, 2009. And I, I mean, we visited back and forth because he lived in Florida. I lived up in Iowa. We visited once a month back and forth for nine months. Um, I wanted to finish my master's. I, I don't, I like to finish things that I start. That's still my thing, even though I knew that that wasn't going to be my jam. Um, I just felt like I was going to start my own business, but I was like, I'll just make some necklaces and sell them on the beach. I mean, <laughs> I'm okay with that. <laughs> No, that's not what I'm doing. And, but that uh, is so interesting because honestly, Sarah, I mean, that's kind of what I did when I first left my job too. And a lot of women do that where I'm like, I'll make soap and sell it on eBay. And I'm not crafty <laughs> at all. <laughs> I, I couldn't do the bead. I don't know why I said bead work. I, no, I never made a necklace. I still haven't made a necklace. But I was like, oh, we'll make it work. Yeah, <laughs> We're going to exactly. do this thing. Exactly. Um, so it was May. May 1st, 2010, um, that I, and I moved out in, I moved out in August and all the things mm-hmm. and yada, yada, mm-hmm. then visited back and forth. And, um, so it was May 1st, 2010 that I, I quit my job April 15th, I think. Um, and I, I finished my master's beginning of May and after, after I finished my master's, my last class, I already had the U-Haul packed up and my car and away I went. And what was so interesting was when I was going through the divorce, it was like, and I moved out, it felt like the most natural thing to do. Like I, w- wow. I was like, I mean, it, I cried. Like I, oh sure, I cried a lot and was on the floor and wanting to vomit. Like, oh my God, sure. this is happening. But yeah. when I actually moved into my apartment, I was like, this feels like the most natural thing that I've ever done. Like oh, this feels good. like what's 
what's supposed to be. I yeah. feel like that, that is also a sign that it's the right leap. Mm -hmm. And, um, we, I had my own separate savings account at 48,000 in there. I had my job. We had two sets of towels, two pots and two, two sets of pots mm -hmm. and pants, two sets of silverware. I had like a so whole set of silverware that I never opened from our wedding. And I just took that and I just left every, I mean, I, he was all set. I was all set. We were good. Um, mm -hmm. That's not good. good. I mean, I'm sure I completely heard him and I'm, I'm and that's I'm really, really scared. hard. And I told him when that I wanted to have a divorce where it was respectful and loving that mm -hmm. I'm like, I love you as a human being. I want you to thrive and I want you to do what you want to do with mm -hmm. your life. Mm -hmm. I am not part of that. I feel like if I stay another 20 years and I ride in a freaking tractor while you're farming, I'm going to resent you and I'm going to end up hating you right now. I do not hate you. And I love you as a human being and I mm -hmm. want you to thrive. Right. And so that's why I am leaving because I now love myself enough to say, I need this. And I feel mm. like that could be translated into a relationship, into a job, into right. starting your own business. Like you get right. to that point when you want to leap, just, just like, I love myself now. Mm -hmm. And I may not know, I didn't know to what extent or all the bumps. In, I mean, just because I'm with this soul made agreement husband doesn't mean our marriage has been fantastic. I mean, there was times that I packed up my bag and was like, get your <laughs> shit together or this is not happening. Because you get, like when you leap the first time, you're like, I'm not tolerating this. This is now what I want. Yes. I am a woman of love and I, re I command respect and I give it to you and I want it back in return. And it all, it's all part of leaping. So that's really interesting what you said. I've, I found the same thing that once I leaped the first time, then I was like, what was I waiting for? That, yes, it was difficult, but oh my gosh, I feel so much better. Mm -hmm. And then the next time something came up, I'm like, boom, I'm going again, mm -hmm. you know, and my mind, and I'm, I'm, I think you're saying the same thing. My mind just kind of opened to, what was I scared of all this time? What, what, what was holding me back? Mm -hmm. I can do whatever I want. Mm -hmm. Did you have any of that feeling? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I mean, and then I've had it retold to me. I, I feel like what does, what is scary for us? And I also gave that presentation <laughs> just recently. I'm doing a three day master class in, in my spiritual community that I lead. Uh -huh. And so uncovering all of that actually this week and it's, it's the belief, there's a limiting belief and spirit has given me a question that yes. gets to our core of, of what is going on. There are many different um, uh, modalities that get to all different beliefs and all, all, the, all the things. So it's like, let's just ask them this question and however they answer, that's their limiting belief. And so I ask it, we get to it in 15 minutes and it's like, mm, mine is, I want to feel completely accepted. And I realized that feeling completely accepted by my own father was what I really wanted. And so I sought that out in male relationships, but it's also me accepting myself and accepting myself in all of my woo ness which is where now I'm no longer ashamed. Like I, there are things that you just have to leap into. And that was one of them is, um, my spiritualness. And because that's really who I am. Like I am, and then I, spirit, I had the honor of seeing my own soul during meditation, which then also solidifies. And that's what I do is I connect the gift that I have is connecting to another soul. I was, I had the gift of mediumship where connecting to those who had passed and your loved ones have been sending you messages. And sometimes loved ones who stick around and have not gone to the light yet or come back. Um, there's some unfinished business. So they're kind of, they're kind of assy at times. So not all, wow. but some, so the, the people that I was working with, the clients that I had at the time that I, my oldest was born, um, she could feel them. And so she would be like screaming and like, they would be messing with her. And I was like, uh-uh, spirit. I was like, this is not happening. I was like, so I need you to change my gift. And I want to, I still want to be helping people. I still want to be channeling for people, but I don't want to go through some, something and all the other mm -hmm. emotions that they're feeling. 
Mm -hmm. I need to connect directly to the individual that I'm working with and I want to connect to their soul. And so it took a year of reconfiguring kind of like a whole new electrical circuit and all the fun things. And that wasn't really all that great, but I did it. So, so you leaped again. Yep. I love it. Yep. And I love leaped that. again when I, I decided to channel for people publicly and I do that. Um, for free on, well, I mean, I get it paid, but I also, I just do it so people can get a flavor for me, um, get a little taste um, on Thursdays on my spiritual, or on my, spirit, on my personal Facebook page on, on Sarah Sparks. So Thursday, 7, 7 p.m. Eastern, people can pop on. And if they just say me, please, that gives me permission to connect to their soul and I deliver messages. So that's so, I mean, awesome. I, I leap again, and then leaping again into teaching people how to live their chosen path creating group programs because I was always working with one-on-one -on -one. so once you leap once you're just like just like you said <laughs> let's do this <laughs> it gets it really um um it gets my adrenaline up now does it you <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah. it does um, because I see the ripple effect of when I leap I'm now giving other people permission to leap as well. And I get the, I get the cycle. I, I have a, a good friend, business coach, who has the analogy of taking off, of like seeing planes take off. And that's the leaping is when you are actually taking off. But some people get to the runway, they realize the plane wasn't completely full or they freak out or something's happening. So they have to turn back around and go through the whole cycle again oh, or go yeah. park the plane. You know, I get it. Yeah. That's the scared part. Yeah. But at some point, the passengers need to be taken off and go to the destination. So you just have to take off and you just have to leap. And that's where it is. Like, you just have to dare to leap. So, yeah. Yeah. so tell us a um, little bit more about what you do. You shared a little bit, but if you could summarize here, we're coming to the end, okay. what you do. And then I will share all of these links. Um, in fact, if you would do me a favor and just email me. Um, oh, sure. everything that you want me to share. And then I will put all of that in the show notes so that everybody can access you. And I know for sure there are going to be people flocking to your personal Facebook profile to say me, me, yeah. me, because I'm <laughs> yeah. going to be one of them. <laughs> awesome. I love it. Um, yeah. So tonight is today, Thursday. Today is Thursday. Yeah. So if you want to come on, it's, it's 6 p.m. <laughs> Central. So join me. Okay. Uh, but just but, anybody oh, listening to this, sorry, this it might be, that's all right. You, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's all right. No problem. It might be another day, but it is Thursdays at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Yeah. So, okay, cool. Totally forgot that we were That's recording. fine. Hey, <laughs> I do the same stuff all the time. Yeah. Good Lord. All right. <laughs> Anyways. Tell us more um, about your business and who you help and um, yeah. how people can get in touch with you. Yeah. So I thank you for this opportunity, by the way, to, to, to share this. Um, my whole intention is for the next seven months, June through July, is to have 100 people living their chosen path. And so living, living your chosen path, if people are wondering what the heck is a chosen path or anything like that, before you were human, there was energy and it was a soul and it, the energy formed into a soul. The soul was either chosen to come here um, or it, or it chose to come here. So there was two ways. And then once the soul was in alignment with your body and mind, then now you are one complete being of mind, body, soul. If you believe in that, if you don't, that's cool too. I only, I'm not here to convert anybody's beliefs. It's you either get it or, or you don't. And so um, that's your chosen path. And a lot of people spend their entire life wondering, why am I here? What is my purpose? They read a lot of books. They take a lot of quizzes to try to figure out their personality types and where they fit in and all the things. Spirit has given me this amazing ability to connect to your soul and just say, why are you here? And you have to ask two questions. Um, you, you have to answer two questions, um, whomever I channel for is one, do you want to know your chosen path? And two, are you willing to walk it once you do know it? And mm. if, if, if you say wow. yes to both of them, it's your verbal agreement to the divine, whatever you want to refer to that name as, to the divine, your verbal agreement to, hey, I am going to live this chosen path. And it's not my judgment whether you do it or not. And right. it's between now you and spirit. Um, I guide you along into your chosen path. And so um, 
I channel people's chosen paths within 15 minutes, you know, detail, overarching theme, some more details around it. Because it's spirit, it's usually very broad. Um, other times though, I shouldn't say that, I've channeled and it's like, you're to be a training design development you know, co coordinator for X, Y company, blah, blah, blah. Wow. So like, you can get or, that specific even. <laughs> yes. Or it gets very broad in general. Like mine is speaking to the masses, the guided message on pure love. I received that while driving over the Howard Franklin bridge, going from St. Pete to Tampa in October of 2011. And I heard it like plain as day. Wow. And I was like, Oh, speak to the masses. Like a lot of people like, mm, no, and I hadn't started my business yet. And then the guided message, I was like, what in the world is guided? You mean to tell me that something is going to be guiding me? I don't, mm, that doesn't feel right. And then the pure love, I was like, I don't think that exists. Like based on my experience, I don't think pure love exists. So I had to work into that. And what I've learned from channeling people's past is that you are your chosen path. So all of the things that you have experienced in your life, all the struggles, all the beauty, all the glory, everything, um, your, your skin color, your eye color, the, your accent, um, if you have one or not, your hair color, your personality, the way you move, the way you connect with others, you were specifically designed for that. Like, think about how much you are loved to, and so well thought of, to be chosen or to come here during a particular space and time to do a particular thing. And I'm just like, whew, mind blown. And so with that, then spirit after channeling and all the fun things. And once you know your chosen path, most people ask me, well, how do I live it then? And so, so spirit gave me, and I've actually been living it and teaching it to others. It was the Create the Spark program. Um, but now spirit has added a few other things to help live their chosen path. And really it's all about listening to your divine guidance and loving on yourself and leaping just, just what you are talking about. So, I mean, there's how to live it. Um, I'm doing a whole presentation on that. Um, most people feel like they're, they're lost. They are looking for clarity. I call them clarity blocks because they have this spinning thought of, um, <sighs> The, the need for more information and in mm -hmm. order to make a decision. And so mm -hmm. they are never clear on what's going on. They're feeling lost. Um, and just more than likely that's more along the limiting beliefs mm -hmm. of like, you're not accepted. You're not loved. You're not safe. It's not right. my responsibility or it's my responsibility to take care of ev everyone else before mm -hmm. I actually live what I want to be doing. And then some people believe that they, there's no time and space for them to actually be living what they want to be doing. Mm -hmm. um, and we believe, um, when, when we believe that there's no time and space to be doing that, I always like to remind people, but we do have time. We actually, you are actually doing what is important to you and what you actually want or what you feel like you have to be doing. So there is always time. It's just that shift of, right. wow, I am worthy. I right. am enough. I am accepted. I can be doing this. Um, and then there's, there's a group program that I lead all about living your chosen path. And then of course there's an the option to work with me one-on-one. -on -one. So that's how, that's how my business. So works. lots of good options. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So to learn more about you, what's a URL that they can go to to start learning more about you? Yeah. www sarah sparks s-a-r-a-h s-p-a-r-k-s dot love oh no i love that i love, I love it too that. that's awesome that's awesome yep. and all of you can learn more about me there's video i have a welcome video on there um on the very home page there's um testimonials on i think i had I named it client love you can contact me on there there's a contact page and i'll respond anywhere between 24 and 48 hours, depending on how the day is going. And then, um, yeah. And the new, the group program, um, I, I accept new clients in the beginning of each month because that's the cycle of, um, and you can start at week one and some people are on week 12 and week, whatever. I just guide um, based on what spirit is sharing with me on the messages and we've got Q and A's and you get lifetime access to the whole program. So like you oh, pay once, cool. but you get lifetime access. So that's awesome. Yeah. 
So Sarah, I tell you, um, I knew I liked you a lot the first time we met. I like you even more now. Um, and one of the big reasons is because you're like me um, and the people I like to hang out with who share everything. You are an open book and I love that. <laughs> yes. And that, I, I think it's because you love yourself and you're, you know, you're not ashamed of anything. You're, here, here's me. Here's all of me. Yeah. I'm happy to share with you. Thank you for being that open and vulnerable. Really, I, it really helps women. And why, why I do that, and I realized this through even my own struggle and frustration just, just a, like two years ago, is people always would ask me, business coaches, I don't know how many thousands of dollars I, I spent on this freaking question, was like, why? Why are you in business? You have to know your why. And I'm like, ugh, because spirit told me to, and people came to me, and I don't know, like, <laughs> ugh. Your big why. I'm like, I don't know why. Until I had my own experience. Um, and I realized I just want people to feel like they're not alone in whatever they're going through. Like, that's why I'm so open is I'm sure you can relate to some aspect of that story. And oh, I, I want them to feel like they're not alone. Like, I don't want you to right. feel like you're alone. Like I, and that, that, that there's support and there's someone else out there that is going through or feeling the things that you're feeling and you don't have to do it alone. Cause I felt like I had to, because I was that educated, strong willed, I'm an independent woman. Don't, I don't need anybody or anything. And I realized that I really did. Like, that's really what I wanted was to be helped. And when you put up walls and push people away, you're not going to be helped. So Thank you so much oh, for you. sharing all of that. I just have thank one more so question much. for you. Yeah. Is there anything that I didn't think to ask you um, that you would like to share with people listening? That they are, that you are um, so loved and so appreciated and so valued and don't let anyone or anything ever tell you different. Oh, I love that so much. And I could tell you pause just a minute to listen. Uh, yes, I channel, <laughs> I channel with my eyes closed. And then when spirit speaks through me, I get all teary eyed. So uh, I felt, I felt that passion. Thank yeah. you so much. What a wonderful message to end on. I really appreciate you taking this time with me, Sarah. Yes. Thank you so much for this opportunity. It's, I'm very I'm very grateful. Thank you for listening to Dare to Leap. Say hello and access additional resources at virtualexperttraining.com. There you'll be able to connect with Kathy to share your feedback and join her community. Join us again soon on Dare to Leap. Until then. Mm -hmm.